cheerio. Bonjour. It's been a long, long time. I broke my leg April 29th. <laughs> I've had more drama. I will tell you that my YouTube best friend Maria sent me a present and many cards. Okay. I hope all of you are well. I want to talk about the dentist family. Oh my goodness. So, Katie Maguana. Man, why do I... I could say her name if I'm not on tape. I did a live the other night. I couldn't say Maguana. I'm going to look it up because it's bothering me now. Katie Mag... How do I say her name? Katie Mag... Mag... Bana Mag... Katie Mag... Banala. Shoot. Maybe I'm still not saying it correctly. Anyway, excuse me. It to my nose. I hope that she leaves prison in a box. And I'm not joking. If you've ever listened to any of her wiretaps, she talks like a tramp. You know, say the F word to your husband or something. At one point she said, I've effed bitches sorry, up that I don't even know because she's so cool. What the heck? I don't, I don't, I, do you know anyone? A girl who speaks like that? No. Oh, top 10 golfers. Look who's on top. My dad. Floyd Chapelier, number one behind Jack Nicholas and Arnold Palmer. I cannot believe my father spent money to have this t-shirt made. When he died, I went through his stuff because I like to sleep in big t-shirts like this. And I saw this. And oh, my goodness. Okay. Katie deserves, like I said, to leave prison in a box. They offered her full immunity. Full! You go home to your children, and from what I understand, they told her, you'll be out of jail within 24 hours. You just have to talk. And her claim is, well, I didn't want to give up Siegfriedo, the father of her two children. So Katie does have a college degree, and I don't think you need a college degree to be special, but she does have one. Siegfriedo can barely speak English, but he was he's lived here his entire life. I believe he was born in the Dominican Republic, but he's lived here his entire life. So... It's, a lack of choice on his point. When I, you know, you guys know I drove the beer cart. You know, I stayed home from work for 15 years to raise my kids. And then I started driving the beer cart on a golf course so I could play golf for free. And one of the little cooks in the kitchen, she was an older lady. And her daughter was 28 and had come to America three years ago. And I was speaking to her and I said, well, she doesn't speak English. And she said, no, no, she doesn't want to speak English. I thought, why would you come to a country if you don't want to learn the language? It, it's just like the people who come to the country and they're offended by Halloween. And so they want it shut down. Well, then go back to your own country. Because here in America, we... We play Halloween, and it's fun. My mother was born on Halloween, and we used to joke she was a witch. In a little bit of way, she was. But um, Sigfredo is ignorant. His partner in crime, Luis... Ra Luis. <laughs> so Luis was set... You guys, I'm sure I've watched all of this, so you know all of this. Um... Luis was already spending a 12-year federal sentence for RICO. You know, mob stuff. Same thing they got Gotti on. <laughs> they got Al Capino on tax cheating because they couldn't get him on anything else. And Al Capino died of syphilis. Funny. He was probably banging many people of his same sex. I'm um, hope I don't get blocked for that one. Um, 
But Luis Rodriguez, isn't that his name? But so they went to Katie and they said, we'll give you full immunity. And she gave them that nasty, nasty middle finger. I'm not sure if they went to Sigfredo next, but then they went to Luis. And Luis was like, I'll own it. I'm sitting in prison. What else do I have? So Luis ended up getting seven more years. So he'll serve 19 years total from his original RICO charge. The difference, though, is federal prison is very different than state prison. And after his 12 years, sentence is over, and I really should have looked it up. But it's going to be over pretty soon. He unfortunately will be transferred to a state prison. It's completely different. However, he is the head of the Latin Kings. I know you guys all are head of kings. <laughs> so apparently he will be treated well. I've read that he will be treated like a king. However, his last five years or seven years of incarceration, excuse me, will not be as comfortable as his first 12. Because again, federal prison is completely different. But Luis Rodriguez was like, I'll tell you what's going on. At one point during Georgia, she's the prosecutor. I think she's gorgeous. She has fantastic hair. I mean, I look at her hair and I'm like, what the hell? How was I so screwed? Her hair is thick. It's beautiful. And it actually looks like she doesn't have to dye it like I do. I mean, oh my goodness. On a side note, her father was a quarterback for the Florida State Seminoles. My ex-husband, you know, who kind of was a little Amber Heard with me. Now, he never pooped in my bed, but he did get a little violent. He was a big FSU fan. His dad went to FSU. I'll tell you something. He punched me one time so hard that it fractured my orbital bone here, and I still have no sensation on this little part. Anyway. Luis was like, I'll talk. So Georgia tells Luis, he's on the stand. So Charlie says that you guys heard from Katie that there was a million dollar offering to get Dan Markell to move to Florida. So you decided to extort him to just take the one third of that million that you were donating. And they went and killed him all on their own. And Luis, when I say that, I was saying, dang it, I lost my feed. I don't understand how to edit stuff. So if someone would like to help me, I'll pay you for your time. You know, send me a message in the comments. Anyway, so she, Georgia asked Luis, did you extort him? And he went, no. Well, that's a good one. I, I mean... And this man can barely read. Do you think he would do this? Okay. I don't know if I already said this. I have my little, my notes right here. I'm telling you guys, you turn 53 and you go through menopause. You go through 10 t-shirts a night because you sweat. You don't sleep. It's miserable. Anyway. So, can you all remember this man, Dave? Uh, Donna, Wendy's mother, and Charlie. There's multiple phone calls about how they're talking, how great Dave is. And yes, it looks like Wendy is into Dave. Today, June, well, it has to be June 20th, because I'm a federal employee and was off yesterday for June 19th. Uh, today, June 20th, 2024, Dave is the absolute luckiest man on the planet. And I guarantee that still, after all this time, when he goes to bed and he prays at night, I'm not sure if he was Jewish or not. Um, I don't know that the Adelsons cared at that point. He is so grateful that Wendy rejected him. Wendy now apparently dates a man named George, which is odd, but I hear she's moving to Austin. Who knows? 
She will be arrested by the end of the year. So if she's not moving to Vietnam, she's just stupid. The state attorney, six months ago, when asked about Wendy, he was wishy-washy. He was like, wah, 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 wah. Well, four days after Charlie's arrest, the state attorney was asked if there will be any more arrests. And he said, yes, there will be before the end of the year or before Christmas is I think what he said and pardon me I'm not sure oh my goodness I'm quite gassy that he was counting on Donna okay so Charlie was convicted I assume if you're as much as interested in us as I am you've gone to pretty lies and alibis She's awesome. And she plays all the tape calls. Well, you know, I only listen to YouTube. I don't really watch. Um, but I've had to watch a few because I don't understand and I need the little transcript there. But, well, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, so Charlie's in South Dakota now. And you know, he's cold. And this is a... I don't even want to call him a man. Because I don't feel like real men would do this. And I'm going to bring up a point right now. At one point, he's crying. I just wanted to be a dad. But I'll bring that up shortly. This is a, a boy who grew up in Miami. He's never experienced cold in his life unless he took a vacation to go skiing, which I don't think he probably did. So he's freezing his butt off right now in solitary. And he absolutely is in solitary. Okay. Do you watch Carl Steinbeck? My goodness. Awesome. I only caught on the last 10 minutes of his live last night. I wish I had... He's an hour behind me. So when I saw the time, I thought, oh, yay. But he's an hour behind me. He's awesome. I wasn't sure that Wendy or Harvey could be convicted. But Carl has... I call him Carl like I know him. You know, my good buddy Carl, Carl Steinbeck. I almost went to CrimeCon this year because my daughter with a penis lives in Nashville, but I did not. And I wish I had not said that. I'm sorry. Um, but Carl has an entire video about Harvey and how he can be indicted. And on Carl's video, it has Harvey's face with a target on it. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. Because I wrote to Carl and I said, I'm not sure Harvey is going to be able to be indicted. And if I were Harvey's defense team, which Carl will never give any tips to the defense, which is funny. Carl also doesn't like it if someone calls someone a bum. That's too much. <laughs> Carl, come on, man. Um, Harvey's biggest defense is when Donna's texting Charlie and she says we'll be in Gainesville and I don't I'm making it 23 miles I'll call you there please delete this text to me that means she does not want her husband to see it so to me that's Harvey's biggest defense and I think that's what he's going to get away from Wendy plays so dumb she was valedictorian she went all of her college she went to Cambridge, Brandeis. She went somebody. I think she went to U of Miami for law school. Her parents, and or nor herself, had to pay one penny. She, her grades were that good. So good for her. However, she sits on the stand, and I think Georgia asks, Would you be held in contempt? And Wendy says, Well, I don't know what contempt is. What? I didn't go to Brandeis. I didn't go to law school. I know what contempt is. Oh my goodness. See, that's where I differ from her. Well, A, I wouldn't be involved in a murder. But I would never want to come across as stupid. I mean, I do enough stupid stuff on my own that I don't need to pretend to play stupid. Oh, back to the pretty lies and alibis. See, I digress. She's playing all these phone calls. 
Okay, my nails are lime green, or very light lime green, but I wore this beautiful little lime green cocktail. They're not lime, it's really pale, so don't think I'm just sick or something. But my nails matched my dress spectacularly. Okay. What was I talking about? When he plays dumb? I'll get back to it. it. My point is, oh, no, no, pretty lies and alibis. Tape calls. If you listen to those calls, and you guys know I'm a mailman, so I have nothing better to do while I'm delivering mail to listen to stuff. And I, yes, I still do this, and not, not this, this. Charlie never once claims his innocence. All he's concerned about is how stupid the jury was, and how Georgia made her closing argument into a Dateline special. Isn't that what she's supposed to do? I find it comical that even the mother, Donna, who's sitting in Leon County Jail, and she's been sitting there since November 29th. It's June 20th. She's been there six, seven months. Oh, my goodness. At one point in this phone call, since we're on it right now, Charlie, it's Charlie's post-conviction it's either the night of the conviction or the next morning. Because the next morning, he calls her the moment his phone lines awake. You know, the phones are turned off from certain times. And I believe they open up at 6 a.m. And she picks up the phone and he says, I wanted to call you two hours ago. And she said, you could have called me since 3.30. I haven't slept. Right. Great. Charlie starts crying that he just wanted to be a dad. I wonder, and tell me below, do you think had Charlie had a child prior to 2014 and the murder of Dan Markell, he would have gone along with this? This was the only time I actual, actually felt true empathy for this murderer. Trying to keep myself clean. He's upset. He genuinely loves Roman. And you know what? I should not have said his name. Um, in another call, I heard that he and Bree, Bree is his child's mother. I'll just refer to his child as R. I already said it, but I shouldn't have said it. Um, Bree was Dave's nanny. Okay, Dave was the man, um, multi, 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 multi millionaire. Three young sons whose mother was out of the picture. Dave wanted Wendy. Wendy wasn't interested. But Bree was Dave's nanny. Bree was 24 years old. Charlie was 39. I really don't care about that. I think Charlie was looking... For any fresh pink inside flesh he could find. And I assume Bree's cute. I've tried to find a picture of her online and I cannot. But Bree and Charlie dated for eight months. They broke up. And then six weeks later, she called him and said, I'm pregnant. Well, my guess is, okay, remember, Bree had no idea Charlie was involved in a murder. But Bree was not stupid. At this point, she's 26. She's pregnant. And the man who has inseminated her egg is worth, with his family, about $24 million. I'd keep the baby, too. <laughs> and But I wouldn't have gotten naked with Charlie in the first place. I think Charlie is creepy. I don't find him necessarily attractive. But I'm not sure if I would have felt that same way. Well, he's not a good-looking man to me. I'm not sure that I would have felt him as creepy before I knew what he had done. So, you know, I, I do have to admit that. A little bit of my dislike for him is knowing his history. But, so Bree has moved back to North Carolina. That's where her family lives. And her son, R., has a trust fund worth many, many millions of dollars. And put it this way, 
Bree will never be homeless. Even if Biden wins re-election and just continues to destroy things, Bree will be okay. Oh, let's talk about Jeff Lacoste. See, I want to be live. I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. You guys know I don't like the lives because other people want to watch and they don't want to hear me say, Hi, Maria. You know, hi. I, I get that. Jeff Lacoste. Even just the first... He does look very similar to Dan. But just the first time I watched him in the police interview and his demeanor, I thought, this isn't her kind of man. She wants a dude from Miami, South Beach. You know, who wants to either live in a sky rise or a pink house. I don't know if you've ever been to Miami, but the houses that are near, they're all pink and pale blue and pale green. It's fruit, fruit, fruit colors. Um, but when do you use this man for eight months? So apparently the first hit was going to happen around June 6th. However, rumor has it that, okay, so the divorce was final July 2013. Rumor has it that between August and October, Charlie gave some brilliant person $50,000 cash to go murder Dan Markell. And what did that brilliant person do? He took the $50,000 and ran away. And why couldn't I have met Charlie that night? I mean, couldn't, why couldn't you have met him? We could have split the money. So Charlie was very annoyed. I think at that point, and from what I understand, it was from, did I say July to September or August to the be beginning of October that that happened. So he meets Katie Magbanawa mid-October, Halloween night. He asked if she knows someone that can rough someone up. He met her mid-October, let's say on my birthday, October 16th. And in that time, he figured out that while she was an educated person at the dentist office, she also had ties to trash. Is that how I say it? And I think he... His magnet just went right on. Okay, this is a chick I can use. And he only waited. Oh, there's Bart. Oh, so Car if you watch Carl... Hey, Bart. Bart. If you watch Carl Steinbeck, he has lots of cats as well. Um, But he completely used Katie. And she got a boob job. She's gained 40 pounds in prison. So if you get a boob job and you gain 40 pounds, do your boobs still say perky? Not really sure. Uh, I'd like a nose job. My boobs are fine. I'm little, so they're... I'm still flashlights. I'm very... quite perky. So, I believe it's already been agreed that the prosecution, in Donna's case, will not bring up her... the phone call. That's Oscar chasing Bart. The phone call where... Remember, Charlie had disconnected, and Donna keeps talking, and she doesn't realize she has not hit end. And she's saying, well, Dan says maybe we can't get out of We don't have enough time. And prior to that, she talks about unaliving themselves. We've lived a great life. We've traveled. We've done everything. We can take what we need to go to sleep and let someone know to come find us. So she's talking about unaliving herself. But then she talks, Dan says we may not get out of the country in time. Why didn't they charter a jet? Um, 20 minutes ago when I was making my notes, I could have told you what the uh, chartered jet airport is right there in Miami. And I believe it's even closer than MIA, Miami International. Why didn't they charter a jet? <sighs> I also feel that Donna was concerned that Harvey would still take the flight. And that's why she's, will someone get him home? He's 80 years old. Someone please get him home. I think she wanted to just put it in Harvey's head. Well, you're not going on this flight. You're going back home now. If Harvey were smart, he'd be in Vietnam right now. 
Okay, I talked about Carl. Oh. So they apparently use this app, an application called WhatsApp. Honestly, I've never heard of it, but I'm not into technology and stuff. I finally only got back on X today. I was banned two years ago. I've been trying to get back on. The only reason I want to be on is I like to talk politics on there. But if you have an issue with a company, for example, Canada Dry. If I were mad at Canada Dry, I could send them a tweet or send them an X. What's it called now? And within 12 hours, I'd get a coupon for $10 off my next two cases. Um, so I like X, Twitter, for that reason, because I, I like to contact companies. When I was 21 years old, so I'm very tall and very thin. It's hard for me to find jeans. When I was 20 or 21, I bought a pair of jeans, and they the best fit I've ever had. And I wrote Levi's a letter. I gave them everything on my jeans. I said, I can't find them. Could you just at least tell me where to find them? And they, they didn't only reply with my local stores. They sent me two pair of jeans. Well, this was 1992, and jeans were about $55 a pair. I mean, holy goodness. I started writing letters from that point on. You'd be surprised how much I got. Oh, on a side note, my entire 8th grade class was required to write a letter to Palmolive about the women do dishes. And it ticks me off that Harry's wife gives me and my class no credit. But how funny that she brings that up all the time. My next video may be about her. So if you have comments about Harry's wife, I don't really like to say her name because I had no idea who she was before him. Uh, let me know. But let me know how you feel about the Adelsons, because I feel like I'm getting back into the rhythm, and I'm curious. So, God bless you, and oh my goodness, God bless this America.